Now, what I'm about to say will be shocking for some of you, I'm sure, but I suspect it'll only be shocking to those that are blinded by their own white privilege. You see, it turns out that being white makes you depraved, and being a white male makes you depraved and brutal. At least, that's what some brilliant minds at St. John's College in Santa Fe have determined. You see, they've launched a new study group to combat the depravity of whiteness and the brutality of masculinity. College study group to address depravity of whiteness. St. John's College in Santa Fe recently launched a new study group for those that most often exhibit racist and sexist behaviour, white males. An email sent to all SJC students, why don't they just call it SJW, and faculty explained that the monthly sessions would explore ways of dealing with the depravity of whiteness and the brutality of masculinity. So just to recap, if you are non-white, you're an oppressed victim. If you're a white female, you're simply depraved. And if you're a white male, you are depraved and brutal. According to correspondences obtained by Campus Reform, the study group was advertised in a campus-wide email forwarded to all students and faculty, explicitly encouraging white people to attend four sessions on privilege so they can begin to be self-critical. Can you believe the arrogance of chiding others to be self-critical while spewing this bile? This is a group where those who most often exhibit racist and sexist behaviour white males, can begin to be self-critical of the very dangerous, brutal and depraved hierarchical pathologies of superiority, supremacy and inferiority handed down to us by white Euro-American institutions. An email advertising the study group elaborates. So what we have here is your classic bigotry bingo coupled with truth by assertion. Rattle off a bunch of buzzwords and make claims for which you provide absolutely no evidence. The main topic for discussion will be an ongoing one. How do we deal with the depravity of whiteness and the brutality of masculinity? How can we get to the root of this problem? Yeah, let's bypass the process of establishing the evidentiary basis for those claims and let's go straight to the solutions. Isn't that convenient? You never have to justify your bullshit theories. You just assert them. Actually, I think there's a name for this. It's called making shit up. The email goes on to explain that members of the study group will read about and discuss the privilege of white people, especially white males, patriarchy, sexism and racism in the neoliberal capitalist empire of the United States of America. Warning prospective attendees that the discussions will be graphic and contain graphic material. Yeah, anyone want to have a guess what that graphic content will be about? I'm betting slavery lynchings. You know, stuff that happened before anyone alive today was even born, but that we're all supposed to feel collectively guilty for. How does that work exactly? So someone who is of the same race as me did something bad before I was born, and now I'm supposed to feel guilty and atone for it. Yeah, that makes sense. It seems we pay more attention to the crimes of the past than we do to crimes committed today. I mean, why don't we hold white people collectively guilty for crimes committed by other white people on minorities today? Well, I suspect one of the reasons we don't do that very often is because certain minority groups would have to acknowledge their collective guilt more often than white people. I mean, if you want to talk about brutality, how about the fact that blacks are overrepresented in every category of violent crime? In the case of murder, four times what their population would predict. Oh, but that's just blacks killing other blacks. Well, what about hate crimes? According to the FBI, 24.3% of hate crimes in 2015 were committed by blacks, almost double what their population would predict, while whites committed 48.4% of hate crimes, well below what their population would predict. Eh, But let's not let pesky facts get in the way of a good narrative. And just to be clear, no, I don't think black people should feel collectively guilty for the crimes committed by other black people. You're responsible for your own actions, no one else's. But what about systemic oppression and institutional racism from the white supremacist capitalist patriarchy? Well, as I showed in a previous video, here's Ben Shapiro giving the best possible response to that argument. As far as the institutional racism, all I would ask you to consider, you can believe what you want, but I would ask you to consider this. Shouting institutional racism does not actually combat racism. 
You have to find individual instances, and you have to show me who the racists are so that we can fight them together. I hate racism. I think it's evil. But if you're just going to say institutional racism every time something bad happens, there's no way to fight it. I need a policy that you're proposing, or I need a person who's actually racist so that we can fight it together, or we can determine whether the policy is good. What I find, what I find really problematic is, is the virtue signaling that I see by so many people on the other side, which is, I don't have to give you the racist. I don't have to tell you who he is or what measures I'm proposing. I just say institutional racism. Everybody cheers for me because that's an approved point of view. And now we move on with our lives. You haven't helped anybody. You've just made yourself feel better. Now, the email announcing the study group's formation was forwarded to both the student and faculty list service for the SJC Santa Fe campus by Maggie Reitz Wells, using her SJC email address. Campus Reform was unable to determine whether the original sender was a student or an employee, and has therefore redacted the individual's name and email address. The individual who provided the email to Campus Reform indicated that Reitz Wells is an employee in the Office of Student Life, an assertion corroborated by a LinkedIn profile referring to her as the Student Life Office Manager, but no listing for her could be found on the school's website. Campus Reform reached out to Reitz Wells for comment and received a reply of sorts from Assistant Dean Jan Arsenault, who demanded to know, who are you and how did you obtain a copy of an email sent in-house? When Campus Reform responded to her queries, Arsenault sent a perfunctory reply stating that she's not interested in providing any comment. And that's very telling, isn't it? They weren't interested in defending or promoting their program. They wanted to know how the word got out. Because like most overtly bigoted people, they know that what they're pushing is bigoted. And when doing a Google search for Maggie Reitz Wells, as the article said, what comes up is a LinkedIn profile. But when you click on that link, this is what you get. Obviously, she's deleted or made her profile private since this story came out. Again, if this is such a wonderful study program, why the secrecy? Now, unfortunately, this is not the first instance of this type of university program. You may remember back in late 2015, it was reported by Campus Reform that Portland State University was offering a course on white privilege. The course description states that whiteness is the linchpin of structures of racial meaning and racial inequality in the United States and claims that to preserve whiteness is to preserve racial injustice. And that same article went on to outline similar courses at other universities. For example, the University of Alabama, Birmingham, offered a course titled Whiteness Studies at Bingham University, The Social Construction of Whiteness. And the University of California had a course titled Critical Studies in Whiteness. Well, given all these courses on whiteness, I thought we should offer a little diversity. I mean, everyone's in favour of diversity, right? So using the St. John's College course as a template, I'm proposing a course called The Criminality of Blackness. In this course, we'll seek to understand why black people are such violent criminals. How can we get to the root of this problem? But I warn you, the discussions will be graphic and contain graphic material. And they beating up every white person. They jumping every white person. Come down, Sherman. He white. Beat his shit, bitch. That's what it's for. Hey, look. White boy. That they beat up every white person. I believe you voted Trump, damn it. You voted yeah. Trump! You voted yeah. Trump! Oh, yeah! Yeah, he voted Trump! Yeah! Oh, yeah. 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 And we'll also be watching a few Colin Flaherty videos as well. 
And on the off chance that some humorless social justice warrior, is there any other kind, thinks that I'm being serious, let me clear that up for you. No, I wouldn't really propose a course like that because I think it's racist and I'm not like those racist scumbags at St John's College in Santa Fe. And don't forget if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, or consider supporting me on Patreon. See you next time.